This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. We are going to take a look at how to graph hyperbolas. Uh, on MathGuide.com I did a lesson and the lesson was on ellipses. And ellipse, uh, the formula for ellipse I had was remarkably close to this. Uh, the only thing different is that there was a plus sign, right? There was a plus sign right here for an ellipse. Okay, so that's what the ellipse looks like. Well, today, we're going to get rid of that, and we're going to put a minus sign. So that tiny little difference in the formula is actually, uh, or I should say equation, the equation there. So that tiny little difference right there when it comes to that sign, right, that sign right there, it makes a big world of difference when it comes time to graph. All right, so we're going to take a look at what are the ramifications of the minus sign and, and why it's different and why the minus sign is called a hyperbola. All right, well, first of all, we're going to graph this, right? And, and it turns out that when we graph this, it graphs exactly the same way as the, hyper, uh, the ellipse. So the first thing you do is identify where is the center. Okay, so when it comes time to identify the center, you take the opposite of these values that are inside the parentheses. So let's see, that's 1. Well, that's going to be negative 1. Uh, let's see, that's negative 2, it's going to be a positive 2. So I'm going to go 1 to the left, 2 up on our graph, put a dot there, and it turns out that that's going to be the center. So I'm going to label it with a tiny little c. All right, next on our list, we're going to use these bottom numbers. All right, so this bottom number right here says that uh, we are going to take the square root of it. So we're going to take the 9, but take the square root of the 9, and it turns out that when we take the square root of that 9, we get 3. So that's why I'm going to put a 3 right underneath here. So I'm going to put this value 3. You know, the 3 is probably not going to come up uh, in red. So I'm going to put like a square root of 9. Probably the best way to do it here so we could see it. And then I'm going to do the same thing here for the 4. I'm going to take the square root of 4. And we did this with the ellipse. You just take the square root of the bottom numbers. All right, what do you do with these new numbers that we have now? Well, since we have this 3, now keep in mind that 3, or this 9, was originally underneath the x. x is considered a horizontal number. So that means I'm going to move from the center. I'm going to go 3 units right and left. In other words, horizontal moves. So I'm going to go 3 units to the right. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to put a dot right there. I'm going to go three units left from center. One, two, three. I'm going to put a dot right there. There you go. So those are going to be some endpoints that I'm going to be using in, in a moment. All right, let's do the same thing with the two. Well, this two, since it's underneath the y, y is considered a vertical number or vertical variable. We're going to go up and down two from the center. So I'm going to go up two. I'm going to go down two. If this was an ellipse, if there was a plus sign in between the two fractions, I would actually have the curvature of my ellipse. I, I would actually, I would circle, you know, kind of contain those four numbers in an oval or an elliptical shape, and I would have the shape. All right, now, however, this is different. This is a hyperbola. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, uh, let's use a different color. I'm going to use a blue uh, color, and I'm going to use the points that I just drew and I'm going to create a box. Well, technically it's a rectangle. I'm going to use terminology that's accurate. So I'm going to create a box. I'm doing a fairly decent job, except on the right side here. But uh, I have this um, uh, rectangular shape. Now, if I draw the diagonals of this rectangle shape, oh boy, this is going to be a challenge doing this digitally. Eh, not doing too bad here. So I draw this diagonal line here, and I draw the diagonal line here. Now these diagonal lines that I've put in a dashed format, because technically it's not part of the ellipse. I'm sorry, I keep saying ellipse, it's a hyperbola. It's not part of the hyperbola. So all that this stuff is all dashed. However, these blue lines, uh, you know, they do have some significance. They're actually called asymptotes. Asymptotes. We'll talk about those in a moment. All right, asymptotes. 
All right, now how do we draw the hyperbola? All right, now keep in mind that the hyperbola started out with an x here first. So this term, this x term was first. Because this x term was first, I know that this hyperbola is going to be a left and right hyperbola. So the branches are going to go left and right. Had the y been first, okay, so let's say this problem had a y here and then the x was here, then I would know that this hyperbola would go up and down because the y was first. Okay, so because the x is first, I'm going to draw a left and right hyperbola, and I'm going to do that in black. All right, so from these points, and these two points are called vertices, so I'm going to label them with v's. I'm going to draw the hyperbola. So the hyperbola is going to get closer and closer to this to these asymptotes, but they're never going to touch. Kind of hard to draw digitally here, even by hand, but just picture they're going to get closer and closer and closer to those asymptotes, but they never touch. Okay, so that's why I'm trying to get that across. They just get closer. So the asymptotes are a guide into drawing the branches. All right, so now we've got our branches drawn, and I, and I should note, that these two points up here that we had drawn earlier, those two points right there, are not vertices. They are not part of the curve. So that's why I'm not labeling them with Vs. All right, so I only have those two vertices. And you know, in textbooks, uh, a lot of times we have to locate those. Um, maybe I should do that on the side. So uh, I'm going to label them. I'm going to call the right one V1. And that one looks like it's at 2, 2. 2 comma 2 and v2 which uh, here on the right uh, sorry left side I'm calling v2 we'll, we'll, we'll figure out where that's at looks like it's at negative 4 2 negative 4 2 all right so we've got vertices we got our center we're labeling points we're being accurate all right next on our list is figuring out where the foci are Okay, so foci, where are the foci? Now we did this for the ellipse. Uh, and then there is a formula, just like there was a formula for dealing with the ellipse. The focal formula is this. I like to make a cursive F. And we're going to take the two numbers that are underneath. So here are the two numbers that are underneath 9 and 4. And we're going to take those two, put them underneath the radical. And since this problem has a subtraction sign in the middle, we do the opposite. We're going to add the two numbers, 9 and 4, together. So, all right, so that makes 13. So we plug this into a calculator, and we figure out, well, what the heck is the square root of 13? And I did that earlier, uh, and it's 3.6. If I round that to the nearest tenth. All right, it's 3.6. What do I do with the 3.6? Well, pretty simple. From the center, just like we did with the vertices, we're going to go 3.6 left and right. Since this hyperbola is a left and right hyperbola, I'm going left and right with the, the focus, with each focus. If the hyperbola was a vertical hyperbola, that meant the y went first in our equation, I would be going 3.6 up, 3.6 down to find those two. All right, but let's draw these because there's another way to determine where to put these uh, foci. Let's go one, two, three, almost halfway, actually a little bit more than half. It's going to go right here. There's focal point one. All right, and then we're going to go one, two, three, a little bit more than half. Right there, we got focal point number two. All right, where are they located? Well, I guess I'm going to put all my points of interest over here. So focus point one, let's see. It looks like it's one, two, three. Uh, no, it's not quite three. It's, uh, let's see, one from the center. Remember, we went from the center, but now we're doing it from the origin, right? Anytime we locate a point. Remember, it's point six was that weird decimal. So it's going to be one, two. It looks like 2.6 to the right, two up. 2.6 to the right, 2 up. All right, let's get focal point number 2. 
Notice all the y values are 2 because they're all at the same height from the x-axis. Interesting little uh, point there to notice. All right, well, where is this guy at? Remember the weird decimal was 0.6. All right, just keep that in mind. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and a little bit more. So that's 4.6 to the left, 4.6 to the left, 2 up. All right, so I've got my center, two vertices, two foci, ready to go. Almost done. Well, we're not quite done. The last thing we're going to, oh yeah, I did want to describe before we get onto the asymptotes, how you know where these foci are. Well, it turns out that these branches of the hyperbola are always wrapping around the focus, almost as if they're hugging the focus. Okay, so picture them as arms and you're about to hug a friend. Okay, top view. So we're kind of hugging the focus. It's one way to get that. All right, now let's get back to the asymptotes. Uh, we're going to come up with the equation of the asymptotes. Okay, it's kind of asked sometimes to do it. Well, we're going to use the point-slope formula. Now, if you remember the point-slope formula, oops, it's y minus y1, and we've got slope x minus x2, or x1, sorry. And that's what the uh, point-slope formula is. I'm using this point-slope formula because uh, I'm going to grab two points. So I'm going to grab the center. Remember, that was a, these are a, the center point is a point on both of these hyperbolas. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a corner. Grab a corner. All right, so I'm going to grab the center because the center is the point that's on both of them, both of those uh, lines, and I'm going to put that value in. So in other words, that center we already know is negative 1, right? It's over here. We already know that it's negative 1, 2. So negative 1 for your x value, 2 for the y value. Hmm, what's the slope? What's the slope of the line? Now, if you do slope, you're going to go, let's see, rise over run. Let's see, I'm going to go up 2, and I'm going to go over 3, right? Up 2, over 3. That's a slope of 2 thirds, right? From that point to that point, up 2, over 3. So the slope, if I stay consistent, it's going to be 2 thirds. Uh, all right, now well, let's put these uh, values in. So I'm going to put y minus, put an equal sign here. I put the parentheses. I put an x minus, uh-oh, two negatives. Two negatives are going to make a positive. All right, however, uh, also keep in mind that we do have two lines here. The right, or the, this one uh, line right here has a positive slope. This one over here has a negative slope. So there really are two lines. One of them has a positive slope. The other one has a negative slope. So that's why I'm going to put positive or negative. One positive, one negative slope. All right, and then, of course, I'm going to clean this up. So what is this going to be for our final answer? It's going to be y minus 2, and positive or minus 2 thirds, and then I'm going to have an x plus 1. And there you have it. There are the equations of the two asymptotes, and I'm leaving it in this kind of slope-intercept form. Yeah, you could add two to both. You could do the distributive property, add two to both sides, but I'm just going to leave it into this form and kind of stop right there. And if uh, you really notice and kind of look at our original problem, notice that we had an x plus 1. Huh. Well, we've got an x plus 1 over here. Interesting. Okay, look, notice here we got a y minus 2. In our equation, huh, we've got a y minus 2. So it's really no big deal. Uh, you can kind of make this thing up. The only thing you really then have to know is how to calculate slope, which is a basic concept. And there you go. So that's how you graph an ellipse. Very similar to a, I'm sorry, it's how you graph a hyperbola, sorry, uh, which is very similar to an ellipse, okay? Uh, all right, go back to mathguide.com, check out all our videos, our lessons, interactive quizzes, activities. Enjoy.